Hello and welcome back to our lightning tutorial series, tutorial number five, I think. In this one, we'll uh, build a data module, which is sort of one of the fundamental building blocks. And in retrospect, that was going to be the last video instead of metrics, but uh, hey, uh, it doesn't matter that much. So in this one, we're gonna sort of continue off from that code and we're gonna add a data module. Now, the example I'm gonna show here is really simple, right? It's MNIST. Uh, but it's really easy to, to build, uh, sort of to integrate custom data set. And it's very similar to normal PyTorch. So I'll tell you how it, I'll tell, I'll show you the structure and I'll think you, you'll understand it from there. So let's do the, uh, copy it to a uh, data module and let's open up the data module. So we created our metric, the accuracy and, uh, and uh, saw how we can use torch metrics in the previous one. Now we will continue from here and we will do uh, create a custom class here, which will be class uh, MNIST, let's call it MNIST data module. And if we're gonna inherit from pl.lightning data module, we will create a uh, init method. Uh, let's just do pass and I'll write the skeleton code to I'll write the skeleton code and you can see how it looks like. So we will have a prepared data. Uh, now this is uh, basically all the prepared data does is it's gonna uh, download the data and sort of if you have text, you would tokenize the data here. In general, you would have a custom data, data set class, right? Like how you would create a custom data set normally in PyTorch where you have your init, your len and your get item and then you would, um, it, that would be instead of having prepared data. Now we sort of have a simplified case, uh, but it's very transferable from normal PyTorch. So let's do, uh, well, the next one is setup where we send in stage. Now this is, so one thing is the prepared data is done on a single GPU uh, and the setup is done on multi, multi, multiple GPU. So in the setup, uh, this is called on every GPU in the system. So what we do is that uh, we make sure that we download the data once doing in the prepare data, and then we just load it in the setup. Uh, after the setup, we will do uh, the train loader, uh, train data loader, we'll do a val data loader, and then the test data loader. And then you also have a predict data loader, but we'll skip that now because we don't have it. So uh, the stage here for the setup will be, we can go to the definition, uh, but it's gonna be fit, validate, test, or predict, depending, you might do different, um, yeah, sort of the setup might be different depending on which of those stages it is. But in our case, it's gonna be identical. So uh, we'll just start with sending in stuff to the data module. So we will send in the self data directory, uh, which is where we want to save it batch size uh, and the num workers. Let's store those as well. So we'll do self.data directory, self.batch size and self.num workers. So uh, as I said here, instead of prepare data, you would remove this. You would create your own sort of class custom data set, right? You would do uh, init, uh, len, uh, len, and then you would do your, you know, get item. And then you would just in your setup, you would all you would do is um, my data set is custom data set, right? And then here you would send in your sort of train CSV or whatever, and this would be my train data set. That's how you would do it if you would load the images. In this case, it's quite simple, uh, but nevertheless, it's it's still gen the general structure. You'll still understand it, so. Here we'll, in this case, we'll download it. So we'll do datasets.mnist uh, and we will uh, save it to self.data directory. This is, we'll do train.true, uh, download equals true. And then we'll do the same thing with train equals false. Now this is just so we'll, we'll download the data. So we have it. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. This should not be in the setup. This should be in the prepared data. So let's move that like this. And then in the setup, uh, we will, uh, let's see, we will do, uh, we will set up the entire data set, 
that will be entire data set is data sets.mnist and we'll do root equals self data directory uh, train equals true or actually this is just to download right 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 so we should not have transform here sorry my bad so this should be like this uh, we just download it here and then we'll do uh, transform to tensor here and then download equals false uh, because we are we already downloaded it now we would do um, split it we will do self training data set self .val data set and maybe we can do a 50,000 and 10,000 split and lastly we'll do the test data set it will pretty much the same thing just train equals false and download equals false all right cool all right so let's just step through it one more time in the prepare data what's being done here is we are downloading the data right all we're doing is downloading so we have it to disk that's it so in general you would probably already have downloaded your data and you have it in a folder maybe you have images and you have like a csv file for the structure of the images or whatever uh, you already have that so you would not do this prepare data then you would create your custom data set right now we're using a pre a, a default one data set dot mnist but if we go to the definition of mnist the vision data set right we can see that uh it, it's basically a custom data set it has a get item we're doing uh image and target image from array and we return image and target right so all you would do is you would create your own custom data set for whatever specific data set you have then what we're, all we're doing is we're splitting it. And then, uh, so we know which is the train data set, what is the val and what is the test. Now for the actual loaders, all we'll do here is, uh, you know, pretty basic. We'll return data loader. Uh, let's see if Copilot can do this. Sell the train data set. We'll send the batch size, uh, non workers and shuffle. Yes, that's it. And then we'll do the, the val data loader, which should be return data loader. Now you might also want to change the number of workers. Um, you know, there are more, more arguments here. You could do uh, pin memory and stuff. You can also change that in the trainer. Uh, I believe you can do that. Yeah. So uh, those are, you know, you can send in more arguments here. Obviously, maybe you want to have persistent workers and so on. This is the uh, maybe the most common case. All right. What, what can we do now? So uh, we can remove all the stuff we did here. So we can remove all of this stuff, right? It's basically the same thing. And now we can initialize a data module instead. We'll just call it DM for short. For short. <laughs> and uh, we can do um, data set is our data directory. Batch size is equal to batch size. Now workers will set to four. It's a pretty sane default. And then in the trainer.fit, we would do model comma data module. And the, the thing that's really good is that we can just send in model and data module, and it will automatically know which train loader or val loader or test loader to use because we have set it up that way. So, uh, you know, we also forgot last time to remove this check accuracy thing because we already did it. So we can remove that. And now we're starting to get more and more to just all lightning code, right? Now we have the, we have a custom metric here. We have our lightning module that we implemented. We have our data module. And as you can see, this is all very flexible and it's very generalizable, right? We know how to do it in the general case as well. This structure uh, is easily something that you can do for more complex projects. All right, one last thing I also noticed we can delete this this as well, right? We're not we're not using any of those. Those are inside the uh, the 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 lightning module. So we can exclude that. And this uh, is now our new code with including the data module. All right. So just one quick thing is that uh, if we try to run this, we will actually get an error uh, and we will. It's because of two things. Uh, first, we need to initialize the model, right? so that we, when we do training that fit of model, uh, we have it defined. 
I accidentally removed that. And also in the uh, data module here, uh, we need to initialize the, the parent class uh, via lightning data module. So we forgot uh, to run that. And uh, if we now try to run it, we get stage, we should have self comma stage and everything else should be fine. All right, so now we have the same functionality as we did before. All right, hope that was easy to follow. Uh, you might have some questions regarding this. Let me know if you do, and I'll try my best to, to help. Uh, but uh, hopefully it was clear enough so that you know the structure of it. All right, so what I wanna do in the next video is uh, we'll take a little bit of a break from Lightning uh, and we'll restructure our code because I don't think this is uh, sort of a good structure to have it, right? We have everything in a single file uh, and, uh, you know, it's just sort of messy. So I want to structure it in a more general way uh, and that way it's more, even more modular, but, which is why we use Lightning in the first place, right? It's more modular code, but it would defeat the purpose if we're having it structured like this. So we'll restructure the code um, and make it a little bit cleaner. And then in the video after that, we'll uh, introduce callbacks and see how we can use callbacks, what they are, how they work, and why they're useful. All right, thank you for watching this video. Uh, leave a like if you thought it was useful, and I hope to see you in the next video.